the wealthiest people naturally attracted attention throughout history, and the debates are ongoing on who was the richest person ever. As historians and economists argue the criteria, adjustments due to inflation, and the values of commodities and services. Regardless, the Roman statesman and military commander Marcus Licinius Crassus was the wealthiest person of antiquity, especially if the heads of states are discarded. So how rich was Crassus, and how did he become so wealthy? Let's find out together. Marcus Crassus belonged to the gens Licinia, and although it was a plebeian family, its members became consuls in 364 BC for the first time, and were generals during the Punic Wars, the conquest of Transalpine Gaul, and of Macedonia. So by the time Marcus Crassus was born in 115 BC, his family had accumulated at least some wealth and was part of the Senate class. His father Publius was elected consul in 97 BC, and then became the governor of Hispania Ulteria. Like many Roman governors, Publius gained considerable wealth during his governorship, probably via the famous silver mines of the region. Marcus, who was his attendant, learned much from his father. Publius and his other son became victims of the civil war between Marius and Sulla. They were either executed by the Marians or forced to commit suicide. Marcus Crassus joined Sulla and became one of his generals. When Sulla won in 82 BC, he enacted the mass proscription. Hundreds of Marians were stripped of their property and executed. Crassus's political opponents often accused him of the appropriation of that property, but similar accusations were made against many contemporaries. We know that Marcus inherited up to 10 million sesterces from his father, so that was the capital Crassus initially used. Now, there is no consensus among historians what 10 million sesterces would amount to in our days, but it is within the 100 million to 1 billion US dollars range. Crassus used that money to buy the cheap property of the proscribed Marians during the auctions conducted by Sulla. He added the lucrative silver mines of Hispania and vast swathes of land in Italy alongside a significant number of slaves to his property. Sulla increased the number of senators by a few hundred, and as owning land and slaves was the only type of enterprise fit for the senators, the new members of the senate were looking for ways to buy new lands and slaves. According to the sources, Crassus was able to sell the property he purchased on the auctions with an impressive markup. As Rome of the time was still mostly a city made of wood, fires were a constant occurrence. The city had no fire brigade. Crassus created a private firefighter unit, made up of a few hundred people. On the first sign of fire, Crassus would take his squad to the burning building and negotiate the price of extinguishing the fire. When the owner did not agree to pay, Crassus's fire brigade refused to act. Not stopping there, Crassus would then do his best to buy the burned property. This made him the most prominent real estate owner in Rome, and allowed him to effectively set the rent prices in the city. Real estate revenue, alongside a steady income from the lands in Italy and mines in Spain, made Crassus the wealthiest man in Rome. According to ancient sources, he accumulated more than 200 million sesterces, which is the equivalent of 20 billion US dollars in modern money. Crassus used his money extensively in political life, paying off the huge debts of Caesar and helping other candidates to gain offices. These politicians, in turn, did their best to enact laws to help the business empire of Crassus. Modern historians argue that Pompey and Lucullus by the end of the Third Mithridatic War and Caesar by the middle of the Gallic Wars became richer than Crassus. 
yet the ancient accounts do not corroborate this. Still, according to some modern studies, Crassus was eager to acquire more wealth, and that pushed him to attempt to conquer the Parthian kingdom. His troops were famously defeated by the Parthians at Carre, and this catastrophic campaign sparked the seven centuries-long war between the Romans and the Parthians, and then the Sassanids. Some ancient accounts retell the legend that the Parthians executed Crassus by pouring molten gold into his mouth as a symbol of his greed. But it is hard to imagine that the Parthians knew who Crassus was, so this legend probably has nothing to do with what happened. We are considering making more videos on the wealthiest people throughout history. So make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the alarm bell to learn more. These videos are made possible by our brilliant patrons over at Patreon and our YouTube sponsors. Visit our Patreon or press the sponsorship button to learn more about the perks. This is the Kings and Generals channel and we will catch you on the next one.